Hi guys, welcome back to Dave's Shed. Today I'm testing out this fridge. It's a caravan fridge from a 1989 caravan, so it's 31 years old. I've had it on hook up overnight and it's cooled down nicely. So we know the mains element is working. These are what we call absorption fridges. Uh, they don't have a compressor. They use heat to generate cold. Um, I'm not going to try and explain that to you. It's quite complicated. Look it up on the internet if you're interested. So the next thing we're going to do is check out the gas, clean the burner and test it, make sure it's burning cleanly and safely. OK, so I've repositioned the fridge slightly so we can see better what we're doing. First thing we're going to do is take this cover off around the gas burner, which we do with two screws. One is a bit tricky to get to under there. And the other is around this side. We drop that out of the way. That's not too dirty. The burner unit here is held in by one screw there and the gas pipe. So the first thing we'll do is just disconnect the gas fitting. So he's loose from the pipe. Remove that screw. And then we can drop the burner assembly off the bottom of the flue. These can be quite tight. That's come away quite well actually. We can't remove it entirely because we've got the thermocouple and the igniter electrode in there. So what we'll do is just turn it gently and have a look inside. And the burner doesn't look in bad condition. A little bit of surface corrosion but nothing major. So I think we'll give that a blowout with some compressed air and that should be good to go again. So we'll just lower that down gently out of the way. And the next thing we're going to do is brush the flue out to make sure there's no soot or rust built up in there. What can happen with these type of fridges is spiders make nests in the mixer tube which makes the air gas mixture rich because it restricts the airflow. When it's running rich, it produces carbon and carbon monoxide. The carbon collects on the inside of the flue tube as soot. It builds up a layer, which is an insulator, so it stops the heat energy being absorbed into the cooling unit. So we've just got a very fine bottle brush, which we can poke all the way up the flue and just gently work it backwards and forwards to clean any soot or loose rust off the surface. There's a bit of rust come out of it, no soot to speak of, so that's probably all good. I'll give the, I'll give the burner a blowout with the compressed air and we can put that back together, hook up a gas supply and we'll give it a try and see what it burns like. Okay, so I've given that a blowout with the airline and it's got all the dirt and crud that was in there out of the way and the burner is actually in very good condition. For 30 years old, that's pretty good. So we can now reassemble that and then hook up a gas supply and see how we go. The first thing we'll do is reinstall that onto the bottom of the flue. Hook his retaining screw back in. Refit the gas pipe and tighten the union up. And they don't have to be madly tight, but they do have to be tight enough to provide a gas tight seal for obvious reasons. Well, you're probably wondering why I've got a car jack underneath the back of the fridge. Well, if I just take the camera around here, you'll see. This is what they call a step or wheel arch model. It's got a notch cut out of the back of it to clear a wheel arch. So typically this would be mounted over the wheel arch in a caravan or a motorhome. 
what it actually means is that when they're standing this base is very short and there's quite a lot of weight on the back of it and they become unstable so we just use a simple jack under the back of it to support it keep it steady while we're working right i brought you in for a close-up hopefully when i ignite it you'll see the flame And we've got a good clean blue flame in there. That looks really nice. So the final part of service in the gas system is to check the flue gas analysis. We do this with a flue gas analyzer. These are quite an expensive instrument. But with the gas burning nicely, we simply hold that above the flue and watch the readings. Takes a few moments for it to start responding. It's not unusual for the CO content to be quite high initially. Hopefully it will soon settle down. We've peaked at 81 parts per million and it's now dropping. The most important figure is the R, which is the ratio between carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. You can see the carbon monoxide is dropping nicely now, 51. That's in parts per million. So our final test on this fridge is the 12 volt system. So I've got it hooked up to a 12 volt power supply. I'll switch that on. Flick the switch on. We've got a red light on that. That's promising. So now if we go around to the back, I've put the fridge down on a chair so that I can reach the top of it properly and get around it a bit better. I pop that about there. And we can check with a thermal imaging camera looking at the heater element and we, we can see it's getting hotter. warming up already so that's promising and we can double check that with an infrared thermometer and if I point that into inside it yeah we get 25 25.2 so the temperature's climbing nice and steadily so the 12 volt heater element's working, that fridge is good to go.